Hey, welcome inside another edition of Tin Chat and everyone alongside radio play-by-play -play voice of the Fort Wayne Tin Caps, Mike Maz. My name is Peter Hood and Mike, a first here in Tin Chatting. We are in your home away from home from the months of, well, I guess this year it would be May through September, but uh, you, you spend uh, quite a bit of time up here during the, uh, the, the summer months, do you not? You think back, this place opened up in 2009, April of 2009. and. Usually it was 70 home games a year in the regular season, and if you make the playoffs, you might get a get a couple of more. But yeah, this is my home away from home. Has been since April of 2009, um, and tonight uh, and tonight being Thursday, as we tape this segment, uh, an exciting game for the Tin Caps as they hung on to beat Dayton and in the process knocked Dayton out of first place in the Eastern Division of High A Central. Mike, don't look now. The Tin Caps have been playing some really solid baseball lately. Obviously, we documented their struggles in the beginning of July. They started the month on a six-game losing streak. Since that point, though, they've won nine of their last 14, five of their last seven, and a couple straight wins here against a good Dayton Dragons team. Yeah, and Dayton's the real deal. I mean, they have been either in first or second place all season long. Uh, that second place is the lowest they've been in the division. But Fort Wayne has beaten them the last two nights, meaning Wednesday night, Thursday night. So maybe it's something that the Tin Caps can look at for down the road, where maybe they can play spoiler of sorts. It will still take a Herculean effort for Fort Wayne to get into the playoffs. And again, the playoff system in 2021 is the two teams in the league with the best winning percentage will play a best of five championship series. Doesn't have to be East versus West. And uh, the Tin Caps right now are ahead of only two teams in the league, percentage wise. So they would have to go on a Herculean run to make it to postseason, but they have the opportunity to knock some people out. Yeah, still a, still a lot of baseball left to be played, but Mike, you know what we're getting close to, right? You know what's coming up. You got me. Football, my friend. Oh, oh that crazy sport? Yeah. <laughs> the reason I bring up football, Mike, our guest this week in Tin Chatting, pretty good back in his days on the gridiron, uh, obviously now a professional baseball player, but Jawan Harris, before he was a tin cap, he was a two-sport star on both the football field and the baseball diamond at Rutgers, and we caught up with Jawan earlier this week. I was born in Tallahassee, lived in the Miami area, um, South Florida area, um, most, I mean, my whole life. Um, been playing three sports since I was little. I played baseball was the first, and then I started with basketball after. And then when I was seven, I began playing football. So at that time, I had to figure out which two sports I wanted to pick because my parents were not driving me from end to end every day and uh, for three games, you know, from different sports. So um, kind of fell in love with baseball and then second love was football so i took basketball out and i was also the shortest of the bunch so that was the easier easier pick for me um so i've been playing those um my whole life uh, up until high school and into college and then i decided to pursue the baseball way you know that's my first love so I always knew somehow i'd be trying to you know make my dream of playing a, being a professional baseball player so well, that's where everything is. Obviously, it's one thing to, to play two different sports in high school, but then going up to the college level, you don't see very many guys, especially in the Big Ten, play two sports. Um, how did you manage that? How, how did you? How did you? How did you survive playing two two Division One sports at the Big Ten level? When I look back at it now, I, I don't even know. Some days were just they were just flying by. Um, in the spring, I would particularly be the worst because I would be doing both sports. So I wake up at maybe five fifteen have lift at 5.45, meeting starting at 7. Then we have spring practice. I, I practice for an hour and a half, take a bus um, to, a, to a class, then walk over, have baseball practice, then go eat, then have class, and then have study hall. So it'd be times where I wouldn't get back to 11, 11.30. And I guess I was young, because I think about it now, I was like, there's no way I can do that now. But uh, I just think I was just able to get by it by just keeping a, a good schedule and keeping track of my time. I think they kind of helped me with making a schedule and, and me seeing those blocks of time. So I was able to kind of manage, um, you know, social, academic and athletics pretty well. Um, but it was a lot. So uh, I know you, you said your first love was always baseball, but it, when you had when you went to, to Rutgers and, and played in the Big Ten and had success on the football field there, did you ever think that 
uh, about switching over and trying to pursue that professionally, or was baseball always number one for you? Baseball was always number one. There's always that thought of, well, what if we can actually do a Deion Sanders thing or, you know, make something work like that? Um, yeah, I mean, baseball was always there for me. Football was always in the back of my mind, but I always knew that I was, I probably would, would be able to do both. You know, if something came down to it, I'd be able to do one or the other, have an opportunity. You know? Yeah. Do you, do you ever have thoughts to this day about about trying to play in the league, or, or are you are um, you completely past the football phase? On Sundays, I do. During football season, when someone drops a pass, I'm like, I could have been out there, you know, two hands on that little spin move. But, you know, besides that, no, I think I, I made the right choice. I think baseball is for me. I'm sure, uh, just like everybody else, your goal is eventually to get to, to San Diego and or the, the big leagues, wherever that may be. Um, what, what's going to be, uh, in your mind, the biggest determining factor in your success moving forward? Um, hitting. Hitting would be the biggest thing, you know, um, impact on the bases and stuff, getting on base. Whether it, it doesn't necessarily have to be average, but I think getting on base and having an impact in the game, whether it be scoring runs, you know, stealing bags or, or playing good defense, um, I think those combining will, will allow me to have, have an opportunity at the big league level. Yeah, I mean, we see guys like uh, obviously Billy Hamilton has has kind of made a career out of being able to get on base and, and steal bases and play great defense. Is that is that maybe a role you feel like you could play at that level one day? Oh, definitely. I, I can I can do that all day in and out. You know, I'm getting more reps at hitting and, and, and finding some new things, new attributes and um, just keep learning, keep evolving and just try to get better, you know. And, and then one day I feel like everything is just going to click and, and click very strong. I, I never made it past little league as far as baseball goes. And I thought I thought I thought hitting in little league was hard. How would you describe what it's like trying to hit 98 miles an hour at, at the professional level? It's getting tough, you know, guys. Now with the technology, they know they know what pitches you can't hit, and they know what locations you can't hit, and they're going to attack them, you know. And it's 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 about sticking to a plan and and, and finding the right pitches to swing at, you know, is, is the main thing. Also, guys are you know they're getting their spin rate up, and the ball is spinning at higher levels, which basically means at the point where you think the ball is going to come in at, it doesn't. It goes higher than that. So if you hear a spin rate guy, I mean, so if he throws a fastball and I'm used to a fastball coming in and, you know, having a downward trajectory, instead it's going to stay right up. So now I'm swinging right up underneath it. So if they're throwing that at the top of the zone and then they're going to tunnel with a curveball, they look the exact same. So it's kind of hard. That's what pitchers are doing nowadays. The tunnel thing is, is you know, it's really good for pitchers. They're, they're throwing the same pitches that look similar, and that's why you get guys swinging at pitches that's, that's not even close. So, you know, it's hard, but... Guys are doing it, so there's a, there's a way. Our thanks to Juwan and Mike. I, I told him after our interview, if he wants to, he's got a future in broadcasting. Great personality, great interview, um, and I'll give him credit. Obviously, you look at his numbers for the season, and, and, and they tell a, a story of a guy who has struggled at the plate. And you, you heard him talk about just how difficult it is to hit at this level. It's not easy, and he, he knows and is taking ownership of the fact that in order for him to get to where he wants to get, he's going to have to get better in that area of his game. But he has a couple of things in his favor, Peter. Number one, he's got speed. Mm -hmm. And as evidenced when he was here in 2019 and led the team in stolen bases with 29, he's 16 out of 18 uh, right now in 2021. He also plays a marvelous defensive center field, utilizing his speed, utilizing the fact that he can read hitters, uh, balls off the bats of opposing hitters, and can get great jumps on the ball. He can cover a lot of ground in center field. He can prevent some runs from scoring. And he has to build on the confidence knowing that he has the ability to play good defense, if not great defense, and can motor on the bases in a heartbeat. And if he takes the confidence that he has playing defense and running the base, Bases into hitting the baseball, uh, there still can be a bright future for him in the, in the game of baseball. Yeah, no question about that. And uh, hopefully Juwan can start to swing the bat a little bit better down the stretch of the season here. And Mike, the 10 caps could certainly use it. The schedule doesn't get any easier after this series completes against Dayton this weekend. Back on the road for 12 straight, another grueling stretch of baseball uh, here in the, in the late part of July and early August. Yeah, the, the first visit to Lansing next week. Six games at the lug nets, then the off day, and then our trip up to Dow Diamond in Midland, Michigan to take on the Great Lakes Loons. And how soon we forget that when the Loons were here for six games not so long ago, Tin Caps won the first game in extra innings, the Loons won the next five. So there's a little bit of payback that could be applied. Uh, but first things first, 
Tim Chips have to finish this series with Dayton off. Before the road trip, though, and before any baseball this weekend, Mike, we have a uh, 7 a.m. tea time out at Cherry Hill tomorrow morning. 7 8 You ready to go? Let's go. He's Mike Moss, play-by-play -play voice of the Fort Wayne Tin Caps, allowing us to invade his home away from home this evening. Mike, appreciate you inviting us up to the booth, and uh, we'll look forward to, to coming back. I like, I like this view up here. We should do this more often. Just leave your tip at the door. <laughs> we'll do, my friend. <laughs> Again, he's Mike Moss. I'm Peter Hill. We appreciate you joining us for another edition of Tin Chat, and then we'll be back, of course, same time, same place, in the locker room next Friday night.